Call to order the 26th meeting of the 2012-2013 Common Council meeting. Will the clerk read the quote of the day? Thank you, Mayor. Coming together is a beginning, staying together is progress, and working together is success. Call the roll, please. Did he? <laughs> I got it. Modern technology. 13 we eyes with 16 sitting here. Cool. Politics at its finest. Delete. There it is. Fifteen present. Well, um, Alderman Donahue is excused. Yes. Tonight, to lead us in the pledge, call up Tristan Decker and my wife to come up to the front. Tristan is the son of Jeremy Alderman De Jeremy Decker and my grandson. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, approval of the minutes, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the minutes of the previous council meeting be approved. Any changes or additions or deletions? See none. Clerk will call the roll. Enter. Fifteen present. Approved. Motion, you know what I meant. motion carries. <laughs> Resignations, city attorney. Uh, there's <clears throat> a memo to the council from Kathleen Hoffman advising that uh, she wishes to be taken off the uh, citizens board of review due to conflicting work schedules. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, I move to accept the resignation. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept the resignation. Any discussion? Clerk will call the roll. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Anybody for the public forum, City Clerk? No, no this evening. Tonight we have a hearing to one, hearing regarding the Eisner Avenue assessment for concrete street paving and curb and gutter in the Eisner Avenue from North 21st to North 8th Street, North 8th from Eisner, approximately 670 feet south of Eisner Avenue. Anybody wishing to be heard one at a time can step up, state your name, Anybody wishing to be heard? Yes, sir. We'll just do one at a time. And can I have your name, sir? Randy LeBeau. Randy, how do you spell your last name, Randy? L-E, capital B, like boy, E-A-U. E-A-U. And your address, Randy? 3610 North 8th Street. Go ahead, sir. Um, the reason I'm here is because I think it's possible our situation uh, where we live is uh, unique and I brought this uh, little visual aid along to help uh, demonstrate that. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the east end of Eisner, but uh, this yellow area is our property line. It's uh, 3610 North 8th Street and Eisner as it exists now <coughs> comes down here and turns into 8th Street. And then there's a, I guess you'd call it a spur on Eisner that comes straight like this. And then there's a large triangular area of grass in the middle that I, the city owns, I guess. And um, the uh, this section here that's in blue uh, is is uh, that's the section of Eisner that our that the right of way, which our property abuts. 
and uh, we have our 74.32 feet of that right there in that blue section. That section is getting removed. So, so, so that's getting removed, and these black lines in here demonstrate the, uh, the new ice there that's coming in. Um, the, um, I'm, I'm told that um, the right of way is going to be extended uh, from, uh, from the, the new road to our property line, th you know, through this road that's being removed. And um, it, it's being extended, I think, pretty far. If you follow our, the front of our property line, the east line of our property line, that's maybe 80 feet between the front of our property line and the, uh, the edge of Eisner. Uh, the city engineer said it was possible. The city could possibly vacate some of this land and give this land to us, uh, but we're not interested in that land. Um, I think the, the fact that the city is possibly willing to give us some of this land means that this right of way is extended all, mainly for the purpose, I think, of assessing us for the Eisner Avenue improvement uh, because it isn't necessary for, for the Eisner right of way. It's just extended to, to butt up against their land. Um, if this section here was being improved, then I guess I wouldn't be standing here today because we would, you know, that's the road that goes alongside our house. But it isn't being improved, it's being removed. So uh, uh, that's why I'm here and I respectfully request that the city doesn't assess uh, our property for these improvements. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. Thank you. Um, who would like to be next? You're standing. <laughs> Can I have your name, please? Yes, my name is Miriam Schnur. Mary, last name, please? Schnur, S-C-H-N-U-R. And thank you for having me and- uh, Mary, can I, excuse me, can I get your address? Sure, it's, mailing address is 4417 Lafayette Drive, but I own the lot on 10th and Eisner. 10th and Eisner? Okay, go ahead. Thank you for, for your time, I appreciate it. <clears throat> a couple months ago we received a letter saying there was gonna be some assessments done and yes, my attention was captured and still is here till today. I have quite a bit of questions and I, I guess I'd like some clarity. Um, we own the lot, we purchased it from the city, uh, we own the lot on 10th and Eisner. It's a pretty substantial lot, um, it's about 60, 168 feet that we're being assessed. Unfortunately, I don't have 20,000 in my pocket to just, you know, do over a 10 year time, I have a fixed income. I'm willing to obviously work something out. What I'm trying to understand is, it's 168 feet. I don't live there, I don't even live in, in the town, I don't live in Sheboygan, but we all gotta pay our fair shared services. How is this being assessed and how is it being broken down? Well, that's one question. I called, stopped at the library, called, went to various other places to get some information, and I kept getting asked, you know, you're, you're gonna get that information today. So today I'm really starving for some info. It's 168 feet. I know about two years ago, 17th Street was, was redone. It was a $60 a foot. We're being assessed $120 a foot. I, I don't understand. Um, why is it so much? I've, I, I know I've just went through some, uh, some communication with I believe it was Aligned Energy, they needed to go onto the land, they needed some variance work because all this work's gonna be done. I guess I'm baffled. I guess you, everybody else in this room would be pretty baffled if they received so, such a substantial bill. Is there any way that we can possibly share this amongst the community? Granted, the only times I use it is when I go over there and I love cutting the lawn. You'll see this one person or two, my husband and I, will be cutting lawn all, all day up there, but I don't use the road. I understand it's law in, in the state of Wisconsin that y this type of assessment can be done. However, each county and municipality has the right and discretion to allocate that as needed. Why aren't we doing that? I, I'm just curious, why aren't we doing that? I, I, I know that there was different discussions of we can extend that time frame for you. I don't have an extra $250 a month to be paying for assessments. I really don't, and I'm gonna be very honest. If anybody else would like to help, 
I, I welcome it. Please help me. I mean, if you want to contribute to the Miriam Schneider 10th and Eisner Foundation, I'd really appreciate it, but I don't have it. And I'm just being very honest because I sat down with my husband. I'm like, can we make this work? We can't. We physically can't. We are on fixed incomes where it's just, it's not possibility. We're all salaried or on hourly rate. Um, and, and trying to go through it, I know that in digging up my own homework, there's, you know, the, the curb, the gutter, the asphalt, the concrete, everything that has to go through, but why don't we share this cost? I, I, I think it's, it's a really injustice just to put it to the homeowner and, or the landlord owner and say, this is what you get and this is how it's gonna go and this is what we're, we're gonna impose on. We have, we have the ability to let our citizens speak, why not? I don't mind paying something, but why should I carry the whole burden? And I, I'd, if I can get some of those answers, I'd really appreciate it because as far as for the form, the calculation and how it was, came about for this assessment, I understood it when it was done at, over on 17th Street, and the money made sense. But this, it, it really doesn't make any sense to me. Oh, I can go on and on, but I'll, I'll stop. <laughs> uh, so if, if any of those considerations would be a possibility, I'd really appreciate it. I'm not saying I'm not going to pay a dime. I don't live in the town. I'm not saying that. I understand as a homeowner there's responsibilities. But I'm asking for a little bit of, of help and cooperation from the city itself, too. It, everybody's in tough times. Everybody has landed on financial strains. And it's, it's very easy to say, well, you're the homeowner, either default. I don't want to default. I've worked too hard. I think everybody's worked too hard to walk away from things. So if there can be some type of mutual agreement, I think we could work towards that as that's the, the quote of the day. OK. Thank, Thank you, you, Mary. Thank you. Someone would like to go next. We'll just kind of go right down the line here. Sir, are you? Sure, and I'm going to need your name and your address. My name is Bob Dumke, and I represent Lakeview uh, Apartments, which are right. on Eisner. And last name again? Dumke. Dumke, D-U-M-K-E. And it's Lakeview Apartments. Uh, Lakeview. Okay, go ahead. First of all, I like to, and I know this is crazy for somebody who's out of town, but. Uh, I got this notification on 328, and on the top it gives an address of New Jersey Avenue. And down in the text it gives an ad address of New, Jer New Jersey Avenue. But there's nobody in at New Jersey Avenue. So I'm sorry I'm late. <clears throat> I have questions. Uh, will you be able to answer questions for tonight? During the public forum, we won't, but I think a lot of your questions will be answered when the document comes up, and okay. we'll have some of the staff come up and, and handle some of the questions that are being asked right <clears throat> now. Okay, I'm gonna ask my questions, and then hopefully I will get an answer. Uh, first of all, uh, what is the cost per foot of the road? The lady, I think, asked for the same kind of information. Um, and then what is the total length of this replacement? And then what was the grant amount? That is the money that was received to do this. And I assume it was received to do specifically this task. <clears throat> and then how was the grant used to reduce our costs? Is the other half of the road paying their share? I believe they are. <clears throat> What would be the cost spread over 10 years? And of course, what would be the interest or amortization for that cost? I think that addresses this lady's question. It should be quite helpful if you can get a spread. Um, I, I think it's also helpful to recognize, and I, I, I question why this particular road needs to be changed. And I suspect it's, you're also going to have water and sewer changes. And I understand that because the sewers have been backed up at Lakeview for several years now. It backs up and floods. I've spent thousands of dollars getting that fixed. So I understand why you want to rip up the road. <clears throat> I don't quite understand why it needs to take the curve. <clears throat> right now, the uh, unemployment rate here in Sheboygan is 7.7%. I don't think people have a lot of money to pay for this. <clears throat> LIBOR in the country has dropped down to 0.2%. And the 30-year note 
is 3.08%. Where's the money coming from? Couldn't you spend that federal money somewhere else? Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Can I have your name, sir? John Webster. And your address, John? 3425 North 8th Street. 3425 North 8th. Go ahead. Um, I'm calling to ask, uh, I, I have two properties on the affected uh, roadway, totaling about 40 grand. Um, <laughs> uh, my home property is only about 10 grand, so I'm not gonna argue that today. Um, what I am gonna ask you about uh, specifically I have an unbuildable lot um, that's basically underwater. Um, that's being charged about 30 grand. Uh, the taxes on this property were 22.5 last year, and you are going to be charging me 29.220.40 for the property. Um, I guess, short of giving it back to you, um, I'd like to know what unique and special local benefit this property has. Uh, it will receive from the road. And I would also like to know why you think that's reasonable. I realize under 66703, you can police power a property greater than its value. But uh, those two questions need to be asked. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you. Anybody next in row here that would like to speak? Sir, can I have your name, please? Gary Werner, W-E-R-N-E-R, -E 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 3519 Highcliffe Circle. Highcliffe? Yes. And I'd just like to have the council reconsider uh, reinstalling or installing the roundabout on the corner of 15th and Eisner. Uh, it seems I was informed that uh, one of the property owners, the southwest corner, was opposed to having that installed there uh, because they would be losing some property. But I believe everybody from 21st down to 8th Street is going to be losing some property. And why should that one owner uh, have more sway over the installation of a roundabout, which I think would be a much more uh, safe intersection than having uh, uh, a turn lane added or whatever the new plan is. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? And Mike Marini, it's M-A-R-I-N-I, -I, at 721 Eisner Avenue. Okay. And we're on the opposite corner from the Lebeau's, and we have a similar situation with additional land uh, that will be supposedly under our care. I've been told by the city engineer that the city would take care of that a, a couple of times a year for grass cutting. Uh, right now they are cutting uh, that triangle every week and I don't see why that can't continue for your case and ours. Uh, another issue is the snow removal on the sidewalk and uh, I know that there's property along 22nd Street crossing the Pigeon River where I believe that is private owned and I see the city removing snow on the, along those sidewalks. Maybe that could be addressed also. But the, uh, I'll agree that the assessment seems high. Uh, I, know, I know that the uh, costs go up but uh, uh, some costs need to come down. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Anyone else wishing to be heard? <clears throat> and your name, sir? Jeff Strube, 707 Eisner Avenue. And STR OUB? Yes. Okay. 707? Eisner. Thanks. And I share a common lot 
between the Marinis and the Websters and have this same situation where we have a piece of property which is completely unbuildable. It is underwater most of the year. Um, we're looking at the same situation as, as trying to understand why that the taxation on that piece of property, which is roughly the 22.5, should be assessed this special tax of well over 30,000 when I look at all of the property and all of the improvements that are going to be performed upon it. And we'd like to have some, you know, consideration uh, looked at into this particular situation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. <clears throat> Anyone else wishing to be heard? Hi. Hello. Your name, please? Mike Schnur. S-C-H-N-U-R. That's correct. <clears throat> Same address? Same address. Oh, okay, go ahead. Well, what I wanted to um, reiterate is that I was just wondering if the council had considered um, kind of taking that whole area where every the people that are would be blocked in if they couldn't get to Eisner Avenue, if they would consider taxing everybody that uses Eisner to get to their property, because you've got a lot of half million, million dollar houses back along the road. And to get to these houses, you have to use Eisner Avenue. So why should everyone on Eisner Avenue have to pay for all the subdivisions and stuff that are back there? I think if you took it and broke it down amongst the houses, say within that half mile area around Eisner Avenue, I think that'd be a little fair because they are using that road and it's gonna have more wear and tear, more maintenance and all their roads that they would have to replace it the way the city does it now. They might have to do it once every 50 years and you know Eisner's gonna have to be probably redone again in 20, 25 years, never mind the maintenance. And so I was just wondering <clears throat> if you can address that and see if, you know, even if it's not the whole city-wide, if it was just in a, a block area of people that actually do use Eisner Avenue. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Anyone else wishing to be heard? Third and final call, anyone else wishing to be heard? It's Alderman Hammond. Thank you, I move to close the hearing. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the hearing be closed. All those in favor, clerk will call the roll. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. Three one through three twenty eight. Consent agenda. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all reports of committees, pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. It's been moved and seconded to pass all ROs, pass all committee reports, pass all pass all resolutions and substitute resolutions and general ordinances. Alderman Bourne, under discussion. Thank you, Mayor Van Akron. I've got a question on uh, some of the documents that are coming out of salary and grievance. Uh, if Chairman Raisler could answer that or Mr. Amodio, and that is the positions that are being changed from managers to directors, is that gonna have an immediate effect on salaries or would that only be when we would be hiring somebody new for those positions? The people that are in those positions that are now managers that are going to become directors, that's not going to be an automatic salary bump. Thank you. <clears throat> Alderman Raisler, you want to answer? You're not pulling those, you're just asking questions? Yes. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, they're not going to be a uh, salary increase. They're going to remain the same. <clears throat> it's more of a, a titling to get us back and get the table of organization cleaned up. Thank you. So we have a motion for 3-1 through 3-28. Any further discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. 4-1 through 4-8 will all be referred to the new council and different committees. And 4-7, it's going to be referred to finance and the historic preservation. 5-1, a resolution by Alderman Ressler and Bellinger confirming and exercising police powers and making assessments for benefited properties against which assessments are proposed on Eisner Avenue. Alderman Ressler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the resolution be put upon its passage. 
under discussion. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> uh, obviously, this is my uh, area, district, and, and home area. Um, I do have a lot of problems with uh, the uh, situation. I would like to call upon uh, some of the department heads and, and Ryan to come up and explain some, and answer some of the questions that um, my constituents had. Uh, I, I specifically have problems with, with the two properties where the owners had contacted me prior, and that being the LeBeau, LeBeau property at uh, 3610 North 8th and the Marini property at 721 Eisner. Uh, again, they do not own any property abutting um, the roadway. I realize we do have the ability to have the special police powers to um, uh, assess them, um, but I guess what I'm gonna ask or I'm gonna try to amend after Ryan's done is to at least have those two properties removed. Okay. Ryan, you wanna come up and answer some of the questions, please? Just for everybody in the audience and on TV, Ryan, Ryan is the city engineer and Dave Beeble is the director of public works. Both are in charge of the project. Ryan? Um, I guess there's been several questions. I don't know which one some of the older would like me to start with first. Ryan, do you want to put the mic up a little bit so that we can hear? Uh, I think one of the first questions that was asked is how was the project um, cost divided throughout the throughout the whole entire length of the project if you look at the one handout I gave you eight and a half by eleven the where it says Eisner Avenue preliminary assessment uh, the total cost of the project was a little bit over four million dollars what we did out of that $4 million, we eat, I looked at the estimate, and of, the, of that $4 million, about 1.27 of that is associated directly with the paving of the concrete street, excluding the bike lanes. And then what you do is you take the $1.27 million for the paving of the street, and you divide it by the total length of the project, which is a little bit over a mile, 5,960 feet. And it came out to be $213 per foot. And with this project, because Eisenhower Avenue was a first-time pave, I know Mrs. Schnur mentioned why, this, why the preliminary assessment was a little bit higher than like South 18th Street. South 18th Street was a second time paving project, which we did, I believe, in 2011. And when, whenever a street is paved a second time, the city picks up 50% of the cost, and each homeowner on each side picks up 25, 25. So that's, that's how you get your 100%. You got 25%, 50% from the city, and 25% from the other property owner. On this street, it's a first time paved, so 100% of the cost is picked up by by the properties that, that, that front the street, those 50%, 50%. And that's, that's, that's the way the ordinance is written on a first time pave. It's not a, it's, it's, um, I know that was, the, that was one question that was brought up. But the whole cost is, is divided throughout the whole length of the project. And the city picks up, for instance, all the costs of the paving project through the intersections, the intersections of the street, because there, no, there is no frontage except for, except for the street area. Um, so that was, uh, that's one of Mr. Schneer's questions, I believe that and also the utilities as well we're, we're picking up. The storm sewer costs, a lot of the street lighting costs, stuff like that. That's the city's cost? Yes, that's the city's cost. Can you explain the chart we have here? Sure. Okay, with this, like I said, it's mentioned, this project is a little bit over $4 million. Uh, the town of Sheboygan is, is through assessments, is paying 350000 the state of Wisconsin, we're getting a, we're getting a low uh, LRP grant. It's low to our local road improvement grant. It's a half million dollars. So after the project is complete and signed off on, the city will get reimbursed at that five hundred thousand um, dollars. The federal non-motorized grant, which is a twenty-one percent, that's eight hundred fifty thousand. That's helping paying for about 14, 14 feet of the thirty-six foot wide road. To that non-motorized grant, that's paying for the bike lane portion of it all. Even though it's part of the roadway, it's a two outside seven foot lanes as part of the bicycle lanes. And the paving assessments is, is approximately 850,000 for, for the project for city of Sheboygan residents slash businesses. Um, and with the city of Sheboygan picking up the remaining of the cost, which is 37.1% or 1.5 million. I have a question, can I ask it? No, let him finish first his presentation. I know like through that local road or through the local road improvement grant from the state of Wisconsin, we're using that money to pay primarily for, for the storm sewer portion of the project. There's very little storm sewer in the street. 
and that's one reason why you have a lot of the issues you have out there. You have ditches, you have no storm sewer at all. So this, that, that fund or grant will help pay for all the storm sewer. So out of the total cost, according to the chart I've got, um, out of the total cost, the assessment for the paving of the residence is about 21% of the total cost of the project. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, from taking notes from the, from the hearing we had, another question that was brought up was the intersection of Lakeshore Drive and uh, Eisenhower Avenue. One gentleman was wondering how come the roundabout wasn't put in there. I guess it was more of a cost-benefit issue than anything because in order for that roundabout to be built, you would have had to buy the two homes on the north, north, north side of the road. I'm, I'm just guessing at approximately about 125000 apiece. So to buy those homes alone would have been 250000 So if we were to put a roundabout there, that would have added approximately probably another half million dollars to this project, and it just didn't really make any financial sense to do that. So that's why we, that's why we elected to go with a four-way stop with, with turn lanes. So it wasn't the complaint of the northwest? Yeah. Person. No, we, we, granted, we, we, we would have to buy property from, from that business also, but the big issue was we, we would have to buy two houses. So. Okay. So, yeah, okay, uh, Nathan, I, yeah, it's just the realignment. I know I talked to our city attorney about with the assessing of the two properties with the gentlemen are going to have a, a much longer, uh, much, much more front yard. With our ordinance, that those properties are still being benefited from from the road. They're they're the right of their right of way is still out in front of their property, and they were assessed just the frontage of their of their right of way. And that's something I, we we discussed exclusively. So, Ryan, can you explain? Um, this road's going to be a little wider than normal roads. How does that this assessment is, is compare to in front of my home on say New Jersey Avenue? Uh, I don't live in New Jersey, but. Yes. With our, with, our, with our ordinance and our assessment, we can never assess for over, a, a, norm, a normal city street is 36 feet wide, which is what Eisenhower Avenue is. It's gonna be 36 feet wide. But it's hoping lowering some of the costs for the, for the assessments to that non-motorized grant. They're picking up the bicycle lanes portion of it all. I talked a little bit about that before. They're picking up 14 feet of that pavement, the two outside seven foot lanes. So this isn't being assessed any more than any other street in the city of Sheboygan no, under no, our not. ordinance? No. So it's a 36 foot wide road, which is a standard city, city of Sheboygan road. Other than the first time part of the ordinance, it says first time paving, assessments. right? It's a first time paving. It's not a second time paved like it was with Crocker Avenue last year and South 18th Street two years ago. <coughs> Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Ryan, could you, uh, for the people at home, that we're unable to attend and for the people here to go through the special assessment process uh, as far as um, this, this is a um, assessment, um, a preliminary assessment, when the final assessment's gonna take place and how you figured the amounts and usually that the final assessment is gonna be less and in the time frame of when those are gonna hit as far as sure. you know when the project is done and how it's costed out and that sure. type of thing. Sure. Like I talked, to, like I mentioned before, this is approximately a four million dollar project, and what I do, there's 170 bid items with this project. 170. So I go through and I take out the items that are related directly to the paving, which is mostly the the pavement and the uh, and the sub base or, or the gravel underneath it. So I pull those bid items out, and that's and that's how we figure out the cost of the street. Um, the final assessment will not be done until I'm guessing January, February of 2014. I will not know the final numbers because this project will get done in November sometimes, and It'll take a month or two before the final quantities come back to me from the from the state of Wisconsin. So the final assessment will not will not be done until till 2014. And could you also, for the people, discuss the uh, the in the ordinance right now? We've got 10 years and what the interest rate would be. Okay. Uh, yes. If, it, if your assessment's over five thousand dollars, you get 10 years, and it's borrow. I, I believe it's a little percentage point over what the city of Sheboygan borrows borrows the money at. It's very close to what the city borrows, though. So what is that? Any other questions from the floor? I mean, from, from the council. Do you wish to open it to questions from the outside? Sure. I move. Second. Oh. It's been moved and seconded to open it to a, a, a couple questions from the outside. Please keep them brief and direct them to the engineers, please. 
paving in the street is two hundred thirteen dollars a foot, as I think you said. Right. The project's four million dollars. That means that every foot of that street is six hundred eighty-one dollars and seventy cents, seventy-seven cents per foot. It's a huge difference, and so you're doing more than paving. You're doing a lot of other things, like fixing the sewers. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess my question would be why why do we why do we spend that type of money? Short distance of road. That's, that's not yeah, but it's it's but it's you're starting from road. Basically, you're starting from scratch. Not, nothing nothing was ever constructed there before with storm sewer and street lighting. It's I mean that's the, that's the cause. It's not it's not just the paving. It's a sidewalk. It's uh, there's many other things. And again, the residents. <coughs> cost of the total <coughs> project is 21% of that, not yes. so 79% yes, is. is being either borne by the city, state, or feds. Any other questions from the audience? Yes, ma'am. Um, thank you for providing this sheet here. And in looking at it, and I, I'm going to ask, I'm not going to be shy about asking, but the city's getting half a million reimbursed, 90% reimbursed. And, and I'm not trying to be sarcastic about it, it's just this is a lot of money. It's, it's a substantial amount. Um, if we get can the homeowners be reimbursed? This? Because I think this should have been done up front. Um, I wish I would have known before I bought the property. Um, two, I'd love to tell them, do you want the property back, to be honest? Yeah. Because it's, it's financially going to ruin people. It really is. I need to have it. Like I said, I'd like just questions, though. And lastly, why isn't it being assessed to the whole city? Why can't we all share the, the cost of what we, what we do on a, on a daily basis, whether we go to the north side? Ryan? Our, the assessments are done, are done per ordinance. I mean, it's pretty straightforward how, how assessments are, are, are calculated. And it's the way I calculate them for, for uh, Verizon or Avenue. In any ordinance, so we all have a fair shape of it. Dave? Part of, part of the assessment philosophy, and it's, it's, and it's been in place for decades, and what you have is, when we talk about first time paving, a lot of the subdivisions and new roads being built throughout the city, <coughs> those property owners also were assessed the first time and had to pay their fair share of that full first time paving of their road in their subdivision. So I, I understand the ar argument, everybody uses the roads, everyone should pay, but at one time or another, property owners had to pay a first time assessment on, on their paving of their street for the first time. Therefore, the philosophy is, you know, the pr property owners benefit from this improvement through the special assessment philosophy. If the council and the city decides that someday that we're going to go away from that philosophy, it's, it's difficult now because you have so many other properties that said, well, hold it. Five years ago, I just paid for a new road in my subdivision. Now everyone else is getting the whole city to pay for their road. That's, that's the underlying principle of it. You, and it, granted, it's debatable. I'm not, I'm not here to defend it. I'm just telling you that these are the procedures set forth and how we pay for infrastructure for the community. We talked a little bit why is Eisner Avenue so much more expensive because it's being assessed as a first time paving. The properties along Eisner have never been assessed for the road. Therefore, with this new project, they're gonna be assessed for the first time. Therefore, it's more expensive versus some of the other projects, as we mentioned, the 18th Street reconstruction, or when we reconstructed 14th Street, or Indiana Avenue in the city. Those property owners were assessed like, likewise, but albeit at 50% of the cost because those roads were already assessed at one time previously, so. And Dave, again, all those, like the bike trail and all the extra things, they're only being assessed for the road. <laughs> Correct, and, and, and we, we understand Eisner Avenue is, is, is a busier street than, norm, than a residential street, but the assessed value, your, the property owners are only being assessed that residential equivalent. In other words, the 11 feet on each side, which is very similar to a residential street anywhere else in the community. And the taxpayers as a whole are paying 37% of the cost <coughs> currently for the project. 
And, I, and one, thing, one other thing I wanted to stress, when you, when you do a paving assessment for a road, it doesn't matter if it's a business or if it's a family or, I mean, a, a single family <coughs> or a two-family home or a vacant lot, you treat it all the same. So I know there were some issues about my, my lots being vacant and not being built on, treated the same as a business or a two-family or one-family home. One or two more. Uh, I'd just like to ask, um, how, how far away from uh, a road that's being improved can a uh, property be still deem that it has been in, shown improvement to that property? How many feet? Is it 80 feet, 60 feet, 150 feet? I can address that. The city attorney probably can answer that. I, I think the issue there, sir, is your property still abuts the road right away. Yeah. Maybe you're farther away after the road is improved from the actual pavement, but you're still, your property line abuts the street right of way. Whether the pavement is closer to your house or farther away, it's still within the right of way, and therefore, you know, you're a butter and the city's ordinance provides for front foot calculation, so your, your lot fronts the street right of way, and that's. So there is no, it could be 150 no. feet, 500 feet, 1,000 feet, could well, be any it, lot of feet. Yeah, it abuts. theoretically. Two more. It's still show improvement. Two more. Thousand feet away, it's still show improvement to that property. Yes. As long as it's within the street right of way, yes, sir. Sure. You mean, why, you mean why we're going to with, with uh, instead of asphalt, we're going with concrete? Is that your question? No, why, if, if you don't uh, assess for the corners, and I'm on the corner, <clears throat> why did the, the length change in my particular instance? I guess. 72 to 96. No, you, you, I don't believe that you're, the, the street out in front of your place, is, is it concrete or asphalt? I guess I can't picture it right now. It's yeah, so you didn't, I guess you're wondering why you didn't get a corner lot credit. It's because it wasn't concrete paved the first time on the first front of your street. No, what I'm, what I'm asking is the length. He's saying, he's saying last time he was assessed for 70 some feet and this time he's 91 feet and he lives at the same property. Okay, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you think your, your frontage was, is, is miscalculated, that's something you and I should talk about. Okay. Just stopping you off, that's something we can look at. One more. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Young gentleman okay. standing up. Um, I guess my question is, is how thick is this concrete going to be? Uh, it's going to be... It's standard 6 inch or is this going to be a truck rated 9 inch? It's going to, it's going to be a standard residential street at 7, at seven inches. 7 inches? Yeah, at doubled, yes. I guess my question on that is, I live right across the street from one of the companies and there's a difference. Tractor trailer parked in front of crossing my road and using that road. Are we going to get... No, this is a standard seven inch concrete road, which is a t t typical thickness in, in, in the city of Sheboygan. But at that point, isn't the road gonna break down and deteriorate faster and cost us more money 10 years down the road? No, through, through the city, city uh, ordinance, that, that, that road will be guaranteed for 30 years. Okay, um, city attorney. City Attorney. Th thank you, Your Honor. Uh, there, there are a couple of comments about uh, people with unbuildable lots that fronted the street. And uh, I don't know if that's the case or not. I haven't looked at that. But we do have, as part of the assessment ordinance, there is a deferral mechanism. Uh, if um, says, notwithstanding other subsection of the section, the due date of any special assessment levied against property located within a general, general floodplain district 
or within a wetland area under the city's wetland ordinance abutting on or benefiting, benefited by the pavement, uh, et cetera, shall be deferred while no use of the street or alley is made in connection with the property. At such time as the property no longer qualifies for the deferral, then the expense needs to be paid. Uh, so uh, there was mentioned that they were unbuildable lots, and I, assuming they're unbuildable, I, I'm not sure why they're unbuildable. If they're within wetland, there's a possibility that under our ordinance, there's a deferral for that. It, it doesn't wipe away the assessment, but it defers the payments until such time as uh, the property is buildable. Need a motion to move it back to the council floor. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to return to the council floor. Under resolution 1A from Alderman Reisler. Alderman Reisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Just a couple points again uh, for the attorney. Um, we talked about the 8th and Eisner properties and, and having so much of a, a setback from the right of way. Are the homeowners then responsible still for the sidewalk, no matter how far back it is, for the maintenance and, and such on the property? For the sidewalk? Like the snow removal and such? Yes, that would. That sidewalk is in the right of way, and whether it's two feet from your house or right. 50 feet from your house or whatever, it's still, uh, while it's public sidewalk, you're responsible. You're the abutting property owner, yes. Right. And I guess that's where I, where I have the biggest problem, uh, and, and I haven't discussed this with all the property owners, but the two that I have uh, in depth in um, trying to get the 721 Eisner and the, and the 3610 uh, North 8th out of it is we're, we're basically extending the right of way or giving property that they don't want, um, forcing them to, to take care of sidewalks that, again, they, they don't want. Um, and uh, so I guess I'm going to um, make a motion to uh, exclude uh, those two properties, if I can, from... Um, from the uh, resolution or ordinance, I guess. Looking for a second. Looking for a second. I'll second that. Can I clarify? It's thirty-six ten North Eight. Seven twenty-one Eisner. And seven twenty-one Eisner. Okay. Under discussion. So we'll vote on the amendment first to exclude the two properties named. And, um, I, and I guess I'll just, for, for two cents worth yet, I mean, they're going like two lots from their house um, to get to anywhere to have to maintain um, this property. And the property on the opposite side of the road is a city park where the city's gonna be doing the snow plowing anyway. Um, I, I, I guess that's why I'm, I really have the problem with it that I think the city um, should be responsible for it and, and do the snow plowing and such for it. Um, they're gonna be on the other side of the road anyway. Alderman Born. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, would those be the properties, uh, would that be the property of Mr. Webster and, and the Martinis? Which, which properties are those? I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the assessment list here. It, uh, it's, still, it's still Lebeau's and the Mar Martini. Martini. Sorry. <laughs> I'll catch that later on. Uh, would, you ex would you explain the difficulties of those two lots again, please? S sure. Can I borrow your, your map, Randy? Can I go up front? And I can talk. Yeah, could you hold it? If, if you look where the blue uh, squiggly lines is, that's going to be removed. And if you look at where, where Mr. Lebeau's van is up in the yellow box, mm -hmm. uh, in order to get to the sidewalk, he has to come out of the driveway all the way down A Street, all the way down um, to Eisner Avenue to try to do any kind of snow maintenance whatsoever. Obviously, um, uh, Mr. Lebeau's wife is handicapped and is, is not going to be able to assist him in, in any way, shape, or form uh, in that duties. And he's going to be responsible probably for doing some of the lawn maintenance uh, where the 7432 number is at because uh, all of that is going to supposedly be right of way of his property. Again, he has no right of way or I should say right abutment to Eisner Avenue even now uh, where his property line ends much more it's going to extend down another uh, probably 70 or some feet if not more and then the other property is is right there where you're basically extending it even further over um, uh, for Mike and Diane's property um, to come over and he has to come out of his driveway where Alderman Hammond's thumb is and all the way up and around to try to get to the to do any sidewalk uh, cleaning off of any sort and if you look on the bottom where there's nothing, 
uh, that's actually a city park where the city's going to maintain from, um, from the bottom all the way up the arc uh, to the other side. I, I just don't think it's fair. These people don't have anything that butts that uh, property to, number one, assess them, and number two, make them responsible for the snow maintenance uh, for the property. Any, any questions on the amendment? Alderman Bourne. So if we, uh, if we take, those two, uh, take those two properties out, then to make up for those two assessments, and that would, go, that would be added to the $1.5 million that the rest of the city is paying? Is that how it would work? Yeah, I would believe you're right. That'd be correct. That'd be something to see, right. That would be added to the <coughs> $1.5 million that the city of Sheboygan is, is paying for this project directly. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of the assessment? I mean, of the amendment? The amendment to disc take out those two properties as stated. Clerk, uh, all right, hang on. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, for those that don't know, my name is John Bellinger. I'm the other alderman that represents this district. And um, while I um, sympathize with uh, the unique situations that have been brought to light this evening, um, I would like to, rather than um, address one or two instances right now and exclude them. Um, I, I would support passing the resolution and um, amending the ordinance. Uh, according to Ryan, we've got till January or so when the final um, uh, billing is going to go out when the project is all completed and costed out. So we'll have exact numbers at, at that time. Um, I know the, the Webster's and the Strubes also have unique circumstances too with uh, unbuildable lots and anybody that has driven that um, you know can just take a look and see that they're unbuildable so they've got unique circumstances too and I am certainly willing to work on um, the ordinance and address things like this um, possibly extending the time frame for those people that got large assessments from 10 years out to 15 years um, I've talked with the assistant district attorney or the city attorney and um, with uh, Mr. Amodio as well regarding that issue specifically, and uh, that seems like it, it could be doable as well. So, um, you know, I, I guess right now I would like to to approach it in that manner and, and work with the people behind the scenes and try to um, address their concerns on an individual basis through the ordinance rather than just exclude you know people here and there from from the resolution. Thank you. Again, on the amendment to take out two properties. Clerk will call the roll. Okay. And I vote will be to remove those two properties from the assessment. And these are the correct properties, correct? Yes. Okay. Ten ayes, five noes. Motion carries. Now as amended. Alderman Hammond, first we need the motion as amended. For passage um, as amended. I move to put the resolution upon this passage as amended. Second. It's been moved and seconded to pass the resolution as amended. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I have one more question for the city attorney. Uh, uh, city attorney McLean, you mentioned that the uh, those two situations with the Websters and the other person where that property might be a wetland. Uh, would that ha would that be the burden of proof would be on the property owner? They'd have to get something from the DNR or what? What does the property owner have to do under that situation? City attorney? Uh, well, there does need to be some uh, determination that it is a wetland area. Um, and I don't know, frankly, if that's been done by the property owners or not. Um, I don't know if, if uh, the engineer can answer that question as far as whether or not the, those areas are in a, any designated wetland or not. Yeah, whenever, whenever we come across wetlands for on, on private property, there's there's companies out there 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 to certified to, to uh, delineate wetlands, and that's what you'd have to do is go by someone that's certified to do it. Then they would submit that, submit that to the DNR to verify it actually is a is a wetland. That's what that's a, that's what the cities have done in the past on our on, on city property. But as as Alderman Bourne asked, that's the residents has to do that. Right, that'd be the, that would be the residents or, or property owners' responsibility to, to hire one of these firms. Okay. Alderman Billinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, City Attorney, could you please um, tell me what deferral means exactly? Does that mean that 
They would be assessed at the 110 foot, whatever that frontage that they have for lineal foot, but they wouldn't have to pay it until they sold that property? Or does it mean something different than that? No, so basically that's, that's what it is until, uh, as far as when uh, the deferral ends here again. be deferred while no use of the street or alley is made in connection with the property. So uh, it would continue to be deferred until that time. If, if the uh, uh, property would use the street, for instance, if it was built on or something like that, or if it was not a wetland, if it was buildable, it wouldn't have to be built upon, but if it was buildable, uh, then the deferral would could you pass the deferral through a sale? If you sold yes. the property, yeah, and, the, and the, and the, the deferral, future buyer would, the would, would, would still be deferred? With, with the property. Okay. Any other questions on the resolution as amended? Alderman Kauf. Thank you, Mayor. That referral, though. Uh, hang on one second. Does anybody else have a question for these two? Because then they can go back and sit down if there's no other questions for them. Thanks, guys. All right, Alder McCaff. Thank you, Mayor. As far as the referral, if you're selling an interest in a land, there's more than one owner in that land. So if they sell an in, their interest, just their interest would be a referred, or we would get the payment, or is that? There's more than one owner on that land. On the, so it, I, I don't know. I, uh, my understanding, the ownership was. The Websters and uh, the Stroops. Okay, two owners. There's a two but separate lots. There's two okay. two separate pieces. Okay, I okay. Oh no. Oh. One piece we both own. And we own another piece, but the assessment of the land is only twenty two thousand. The assessment for the road is twenty nine. Okay. I don't have an answer to that. Any other questions from the, from the council? We're going to vote now on amended on the resolution. City clerk will call the roll. Scott. 12 ayes, 3 noes. The motion carries as amended. 5 2 through 5 5 to be referred to committees of the new council. 6 1. Six one from committee report from law and licensing recommending denying taxi license number 9895. Alderman Vandewilly. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted under discussion. Alderman Vanderwilly. Is Michelle Clossing here this evening? She's not here. Um, the committee voted to deny her license for the one based on her record of violation. Any discussion on the committee report? Clerk will call the roll. Fifteen eyes. Motion carries. 6 2 committee report from law and licensing denying taxi driver license number 9492. Alderman Vandewilly. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the committee report be accepted and adopted. Under d discussion, Alderman Vandewilly. Is Trial West here this evening? He's not here. Um, we invited him to our meeting um, on two separate occasions and he did not appear. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Fifteen eyes. Motion carried. Six three is a committee report from finance authoring transfers and appropriations of the 2013 budget. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. I move to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we 
accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Any discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Joe? 15 ayes. <laughs> Motion carried. Committee report from finance recommending authorizing transfer of appropriations in 2013 budget. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. I move to accept and adopt the uh, uh, and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept the committee report and put the resolution upon its passage. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 6-5, committee report from finance recommending authorizing the transfer and appropriations of the 2013 budget. Alderman Hammond. Thank you again. I move the RCB accepted and adopted and the resolution put upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the committee report be accepted and adopted and that the resolution be put upon its passage. Is there any discussion? Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you. I just would like to briefly thank uh, Georgia Pacific and their foundation for the generous donation to purchase these helmets. So I just want to publicly thank them for their generous contribution. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. <coughs> 15 ayes. Motion carries. 6-6 six, six through 6-8 six, will be referred. Again, to committees of the new council. Ordinances introduced 6 1 through 6, uh, 7 1 through 7 3 will be referred to committees of the new council. Other matters? General Ordinance number 56 12 13 by Alderman Raisler. Are you going to read that? Or? No. no. Okay. Alderman Raisler. <laughs> Koth and Vanderwee repealing and recreating section number 29-3 of the Municipal Code. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Under discussion, Alderman Bourne. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Raisler, could you just go over the uh, specifics of what this uh, ordinance is going to do? I missed, I think I missed it in my reading. Uh, the purpose of this, and, and Director Moyer can help me if I mess it up, is uh, basically just uh, cleaning up the ordinance and Attorney McLean right um, for the department heads still having to live within the city as long as we still have that ability, um, which may or may not change later in the year with this, the governor's uh, bill. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Fifteen eyes. Motion carried. Other matters. City Attorney. Uh, nine one is an RO by the Building Inspection Department submitting the Building Inspectors uh, Building Inspection Department's report for March 2013. Public Protection and Safety of the New Council. Two is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from James Turner requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restrictions in order to live at 1213 North 12th Street. Public protection and safety of the new council. 9.3 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2013 and June 30, 2014. All licensed under the new council. Uh, 9.4 is a resolution authorizing the purchase of 1014 and 1016 Erie Avenue for the purposes of the raising of the property for new private investment in the neighborhood as part of the neighborhood revitalization strategy area activities. That will go to city plan. For my announcements, Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we've got a couple individuals that will be leaving us after tonight's meeting. Um, Alderman Wangaman, the elder statesman class historian, um, Alderman Riesler, just class clown, and uh, <laughs> Alderperson Koth, 
um, will be leaving us. Um, I just want to thank you um, for all of your service. Um, as this meeting tonight indicated, there's a lot of things that aren't easy decisions that we have to make, and at times it's been pretty difficult. But you know, I certainly appreciate your service, your candor, and also your commitment to your fellow residents and citizens. So thank you very much. Good luck in your future endeavors. Thank you. Any, any of you three would like to make a statement? Bill? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've been up here so long, I've even been here before Marge Matter. <laughs> <laughs> And, and that was some time ago. But thank you, Marge, for being an excellent citizen. She's, she hardly ever misses a meeting. I think she's made more meetings than I have. <laughs> so it, uh, Monday nights will be kind of different for me now. I've been at this for about 14 years. and In fact, I've been with the city for over 50 years. But uh, you're not rid of me yet. I might turn out to be the, the Brett Favre of the council and keep coming back all the time. <laughs> So I, I thank you for the nice words, and uh, I'm going to miss you all, and it, it's been great working with you. Thanks much. Thank you, Alderman Wangerman. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm going to introduce Bill to Monday Night Football. <laughs> You'll have something else to do on Monday nights, but uh, I'd like to thank everybody. Um, I made a lot of great, um, a lot of great friends. Uh, we had our ups and we had our downs. Um, we had our challenges, many, many challenges. And uh, I, I had a great time. I enjoyed it. I have other endeavors, obviously, to, um, to tackle, and uh, that keeps me busy. But again, I want to thank all of you for uh, helping me and putting up with me. Uh, I know I'm not always the easiest person to deal with all the time, but uh, we got through the last three years, and again, I really appreciate it, and I'm glad I met all of you. Thanks. Thank you, Alderman Raisler. Alderman Kath. Thank you, Mayor Van Akron. Um, I would just like to say that I enjoy working with each and every one of you. I've enjoyed working with uh, just about everyone in this room. Uh, I would like to thank my constituents for uh, putting me here for four years. And um, I'd like to say to Billy Thiel, who's taking my spot, um, good luck to you and be true to yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Koth. Thank you all. My last night, too. Um, I want to thank the council, all the department heads that are here, and all the city workers, you know, the city workers and, and the people that are are here tonight is what makes this city go. Whether it's somebody working in the parks all the way to our department heads, they're all important and they're great employees and I enjoy every minute that I've served here. I wanna thank the council for the year. Um, we've had our ups and downs, but I've, I've enjoyed every minute. You know, in 1986, I started here as an alderman, sitting actually where Alderman Decker's sitting right now. It's kinda of neat to see my son and son-in-law there. Um, before it was my father and I sitting here for many years. Uh, the tradition goes on, the Sheboygan goes on. I wanna thank my family, my wife. She's put up with me for many years in politics. This is it, honey, really, <laughs> this is it. <laughs> and the rest of my family. You know, I've been doing this for, like I said, over 25 years. I've enjoyed it. I've had a great uh, career. I've enjoyed working with all the people in Sheboygan. Um, People that know my story of how I got here from very young on, it's time to move it on. And um, I've got something for Mike. Mike, this is for Mike Vanderstein, this is for you. And now we'll adjourn. Alderman Hammond. Motion to adjourn. Second. It's been moved, seconded to adjourn. Hit your buttons and Get we're adjourned. Get Good luck. Here.